Hello, I'm meteorologist Jared Silverman. Thank you for joining us here at WAFB. We're going to talk a little bit about a hot button issue, that being global climate change. Of course, it's a hot button issue because it's not only in the news all the time for years, but also a hot button issue in the political arena. For this segment, of course, we're going to skip all of that and just talk about the facts, what we do know versus what we don't know about global climate change. Now, of course, this is something that we have been talking about for a very long time. So when we talk about climate climate change specifically what are we talking about that's changing? And there are really five main things, five different elements that we talk about that have undergone significant change over the past few years. The first one is carbon dioxide and the levels of carbon dioxide. Why do we care about carbon dioxide? Well, it's a greenhouse gas that actually traps in heat. So as we produce more and more of it and spew more of it into the atmosphere, that also can have an influence on the climate. The second one, of course, is probably the biggest one, and that's global temperature. In this case, it's the global surface temperature and the average temperature across the entire planet, which, by the way, is a little bit tricky because we not only need the surface temperature on the land, we also need the surface temperature above the sea as well because lest we forget, almost 80% of the planet is made up of water. So if we can't represent that accurately, then we can't even begin to have a good representation of the climate across the globe. The third element that we look at is Arctic ice, whether it's been increasing, decreasing, or going sideways over the past few years. The next one are ice sheets, the sheer number and density of ice sheets that are in the Arctic and beyond in areas whether or not we have seen a big change in that over the past few years. And then finally, Finally, of course, we talk about sea level, whether or not there has been a rise or a decline in those numbers, and we'll get into that as well. First, we should start by talking about the data. This data is mainly between the years 1880 and 2020, so that's about a sample size of 140 years, which is significant when you're talking about weather, but when you're talking about the global climate, you could make the argument that it's insignificant because the Earth has been here, after all, for billions of years, and mathematically, 140 years on billions of years would be mathematically negligible. It would be a, a blink on the geologic time scale. But the reason why we look at these past 140 years is because we've seen significant changes, not only in that time frame, but even in a shorter time frame, and we're going to talk about that as well. Let's start with the biggest fact that we have seen, the biggest observation, and that is this. 19 of the warmest years in that 140, so in the past 140 years, 19 of the warmest years have occurred since the year 2000. So that means over the past 20 years, 19 of them have been the warmest. That means there's only been one year that was the exception to the rule, and that was it. So more of the contributing factors between past and present temperatures, which by the way, we have seen the global average temperature go up by about two degrees over the past 100 years. Typically, you'll hear one degree or just over one degree. Remember, you've got to remember the labels, whether they're talking about degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. If you're talking about degrees Fahrenheit, it's been actually closer to two degrees in that time frame. So let's talk about first the rising levels of CO2, carbon dioxide, which is kind of a byproduct, both naturally and, of course, caused by humans as well. We've seen it most dramatically since the Industrial Revolution, which is why we go back in our data to the 19. 50s, 1960s, because that's when we tend to see the most substantial increase in our graphs. So looking at this one right here, and this is actually taken specifically in Hawaii near a volcanic site. Now that's interesting to note because remember volcanoes are an example of a natural pollutant. It's something that occurs with or without humans being there and it does pollute the atmosphere. So that's one of the tough things about global warming and global climate change is trying to decipher how much of this climate change are we responsible is because of human activity versus how much is anthropogenic, how much of that change is something that would have taken place naturally with or without humans' existence. But the rising levels of carbon dioxide were going from current back to about, let's say, 2004. That's where it looks like the graph begins at 380 parts per million of CO2 going all the way up to 500. So what that tells us is just over the past 10 to 15 years, we have almost seen a doubling, not quite a doubling, but we have seen that number of parts per million go up almost twice as much in a very small amount of time. And as we talked about, that's responsible for trapping in the heat. 
which can raise the global temperature. And that's what this is showing right here. This is the change in global average surface temperatures across the globe. Now, this one uses the full 140 years. So we go all the way back to the year 1880, and then we go to 2020. So that's 140 years. It's a pretty good sample size there. And you can see as you go through the graph, there are a lot of ups and downs, a lot of hills and valleys here. But as you look at the overall graph, which starts at about the zero line at 1880, so let's call it zero back at 1880, to now just over one full degree. But again, remember, that's one degree Celsius. So when we talk about Fahrenheit, it's actually closer to two degrees. And that doesn't sound significant, but when you're talking about the global surface temperature, the global average temperature, it really is significant. And it really does make a difference. And we're seeing that difference in those other facets. One of them is the declining Arctic ice sheets. And that's what we're seeing here. This goes to about the year 2020. It starts at the year 2000. So this is about a 20-year graph that we're looking at. And you can see, again, ebbs and flows hills and valleys, but the overall trend is what we really look at, especially in recent years, where we see that that number has gone all the way down here, which is minus 3,000. In other words, that's gone down minus 3,000 by these units just over the past 20 years. So we've seen a massive decline in the number and the mass of Arctic ice sheets across the globe, which obviously is not something that's normal. It's something that has to be tied to some sort of global climate change. The other thing is the declining Arctic sea ice. This is a little bit different from the ice sheets, but it is closely tied together. This graph is a little bit more simplified, going back to about 1980. So the length of this graph is about 40 years between 1980 and 2020. And there you can see, again, a steady decline in the Arctic sea ice. This is in millions of square kilometers. So millions of square kilometers, close to eight back in the early 1980s. And now here, it's close to four. So again, we're going from eight to four. So to oversimplify it, that tells us that the Arctic sea ice has gone down by about half. It's about half of what it used to be. And we're not even going that far back. We're going 40 years back. Uh, if we were going several hundreds of years back, that might be a little bit different. The other element that we talk about are the rising levels and the sea levels. Now, this graph here goes from 2020 all the way back to 1990. So here we're going back about 30 years. The different graphs here go back different spans. This is the sea height in um, millimeters, basically. So if we go back to the early 1990s, we zero it out, and then we go to 2020, and we come up to 100. What that tells us and what we've seen from NASA is that we have seen a rise of nearly seven feet uh, across the globe in terms of a rise of the sea level. The global rising sea level is definitely evident, especially in the past 10 to 20 years. And this is something that is somewhat alarming and concerning, not only to scientists, but of course everybody around the world who is interested in climate change and the adverse effects that it will cause. Of course, sometimes there is some bad science out there. So I guess I could take this time to talk a little bit about the bad science. Uh, sometimes you'll hear people talk about um, the, the uh, greenhouse effect. Now, remember, there's a difference between greenhouse gases and global warming and the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is actually naturally occurring. So the greenhouse effect is not so much a bad thing. Without the greenhouse effect, the global average temperature would be almost 50 degrees cooler, which wouldn't even support human life. So without the greenhouse effect, which again is naturally occurring, there probably wouldn't even be life on this planet. So again, not a bad thing. But when we talk about greenhouse gases, that's a little bit different because then we're talking about stuff like CO2. Then we're talking about stuff like methane. We're talking about aerosols. We're talking about pollutants. And that has an adverse effect on everything that you see here. The rising level of carbon dioxide, the rising temperatures of the globe, the decreasing Arctic sea ice, the decreasing amount of ice sheets, and the rising sea level. Of course, this has played an influence on weather as well in the number of hurricanes, but not so much just the number of hurricanes, but in their intensity as well as their frequency. Of course, uh, there are natural variations. So some of the big questions when it comes to global climate change, number one question would be how much of this essentially 
is our fault. How much of this is the fault of human beings and human activity? And the simplest answer is we can't quantify it because there are too many variables to quantify. But what we can tell is that we are having a significant impact just by looking at all the graphs and all the data simply going back to the 1950s, which again, around the time, close to the time of the Industrial Revolution. And we see if we go before the Industrial Revolution, the numbers don't change that much. But after and since the Industrial Revolution, a lot of the numbers uh, go up drastically. So we know that we are definitely having an impact, and we know that that impact is negative. Of course, does this mean that we're going to see something catastrophic in the near future? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that, but it means that if we don't change the constant, the current trajectory that we're on right now, uh, then there could be, uh, of course, bad times to come, not only in just weather, but in climate and in other facets of life as well. The other thing that we see here, other than the ice sheets and uh, the rising sea level, is also what about the data? We talked about how we went back about 140 years, all the way back to the year 1880. The one thing that is important to note is you could make the argument that some of the data, the early data, especially in the 1800s and the 1900s, is a little bit suspect. And you would be right in that assertion. Because one of the things that I've actually seen in research, because I've done extensive research on this topic, is back in the old days, in order to find out or in order to approximate what the sea temperature was, what the sea surface temperatures were, what they would do is actually on ships, they would take alcohol thermometers and dip them into the water, and whatever temperature they had, that would be what they called the sea surface temperature in that area. Of course, you fast forward to today, we know that's not the case. We know if you did that, you would actually be getting too cold of a reading. So then you start to think to yourself, well, then maybe the global climate change is not as bad, not as pronounced as we think it is when we look back at the data. But here's the thing that's somewhat concerning and alerting. A lot of the bad data that we're seeing, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the significant information that we're seeing with global climate change has occurred more recently in the past 20 to 30 years. So in case you were wondering, how far back can we go where this scientific data, where the observations are accurate, where they're not suspect? If I had to put a year on it or a period, I would say the 1970s, because in the mid-1970s, that's when NASA where a lot of this information comes from, they started launching their different satellites, something called the TIROS, which was a satellite that they launched and a network of satellites they launched in the 1970s, which can get a better idea on the global average temperatures and do so more accurately. And so we know we have good data, reliable data, going back to at least the 1970s, if not back a little further than that. And some of the most alarming trends and alarming data that we have seen has been after the 1970s, when the data was very reliable. Uh, the other thing that's very important to note is that right here, in the past 20 years, 19 out of the past 20 years, and this is with accurate data, accurate technology, 19 of the last 20 years have been amongst the warmest in that 140-year period. So this is something that is not just uh, cyclical, this is something that is definitely a trend, and it's a trend that's not heading in a good direction. Once again, I'm meteorologist Jared Silverman. We thank you for spending time here and joining us. And we'll talk a lot more on this topic. There are many more different facets about global climate change that we've talked about. This is just the beginning, but thank you for joining us. I'm Liz Coe. Thanks for checking out the WAB YouTube channel. Hey, why don't you subscribe while you're here? Go ahead and click on that box, and you'll get the latest updates on when we go live. Make sure you download the WAB News app for the latest updates, too.